let's talk a little bit about fertilizer. The fertilizer that we buy has a number on it called NPK. That represents the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. There's three numbers. So a very common fertilizer is a 10-10-10. And that means that we have 10% of nitrogen, 10% of phosphorus, and 10% of potassium. Or at least that's what most sites and most books will tell you. In fact, that's not quite correct. The nitrogen is the percent nitrogen. But for both phosphorus and potassium, it's actually percent of a different chemical. So for phosphorus, it's the percent P2O5. That doesn't really make a lot of difference until you try to calculate how much fertilizer you want to add to your garden. And then it becomes really important. Now I'm going to show you ways of growing your vegetables where most of this fertilizer isn't needed. Uh, so you don't have to worry too much. But just be aware of the fact that a 10-10-10 is not 10% of each of those nutrients. And by the way, it's an NPK. It represents nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. And you might wonder, well, who the heck put a K in for potassium? All of these elements have been known for a very long time. And the oldest ones are based on Latin names or Greek names. And potassium used to be called kalium. Starts with a K, so it became a K. And the way I remember the order of these is that they're alphabetical, NPK. Here's a compost pile. There's lots of myths surrounding organic fertilizer. And organic fertilizer means different things to different people. And I use a broader term. I think that anything that you're going to put into your garden is fertilizer. So I treat compost as a fertilizer. One of the main reasons for using it is to add nutrients to the garden. And that's what fertilizer does. And I call it an organic fertilizer. Online you see things like this, nutritious banana peels. People will take these banana peels, put them in water, let them sit for several days. The water goes a little brown and then they say that this is really great fertilizer. Well, it turns out that that water has almost nothing in it. Bananas are made up of larger chemicals, so they contain things like proteins, carbohydrates, vitamins, fibers, oils, and DNA. Plants can't use any of this. If we give a plant some protein, it just sits there. The plant will starve. It cannot eat these things. These are things that our bodies can eat, but plants can't. Plants can only eat the very basic nutrients. So they can eat phosphorus. They can eat potassium. Uh, nitrogen they get in the form of a little compound called nitrate. But they can't eat these larger ones. So when we take a banana peel and we want to use it to feed a plant, the first thing that has to happen is that all of these large molecules have to start breaking down. And this is really what happens in a compost pile. So you start with a banana, it looks like a banana. We put it in a compost pile, we turn it over, it slowly goes brown and black. It slowly breaks up into smaller and smaller pieces. And at some point, our eyes can't recognize it anymore as a banana. And we say that's finished compost. But in fact, it's not finished yet. This compost will continue to degrade for another five years. During that whole process, it is slowly releasing the nutrients that plants can use. So the carbohydrates are sticking around here for many years before they're completely degraded and the nutrients are actually released. So all of these things add value to the garden, but they are of no use to the plant until it actually gets those nutrients released. Here's a very common myth that I see all the time. People will say things like synthetic fertilizer is not good for soil. Synthetic fertilizer kills microbes. Well, I'm going to prove to you that that's complete nonsense. Here's an example of two molecules. These are nitrate molecules. It's how plants get most of their nitrogen. So on the left, we have an organic nitrate molecule. And on the right, we have a synthetic nitrate molecule. Can you spot the difference? Well, I hope not, because there is no difference. These molecules are absolutely the same. Neither plants, nor microbes, nor any laboratory can tell the difference between these two. They just came from different places. And plants can't use them until they're actually nitrate molecules. And a plant doesn't care where it came from. And the same is true of all the microbes, all the bacteria and the fungi in soil. They all use nitrates too, 
They don't care where it came from because it's absolutely the same by the time it's in a form that they could use. So if someone claims that synthetic fertilizer harms microbes or plants or soil, then organic fertilizer will do exactly the same thing because it's the same molecule. So this idea that there's something wrong with synthetic is completely false. Now, that doesn't mean that synthetic fertilizer and organic are the same. There are some benefits to organic fertilizer, but as far as providing nutrients to the plants, there's no difference. Here's another myth that's very common. This is plant-specific fertilizer. Now, I happen to pick on roses here because I had the slide already finished. But if you go to the store, you'll find rose fertilizer. You will find tomato fertilizer. You'll find orchid fertilizer. You have all these specialized kinds of fertilizer. And you have to ask the question, well, what makes it so special? So here's a little exercise you can do. And you can do it with tomatoes. I went online, looked in Google, searched for rose fertilizer and looked for images. And here's some of the ones I collect. Now these are all manufacturers of rose fertilizer. They're all experts at providing the right kind of fertilizer for roses. But let's have a look at these. Like in the top left corner, they're selling a 61216. So what that tells me is that roses don't require very much nitrogen, but they need a lot of K, the last one, the MPK. So they need a lot of potassium. And the middle number is pretty high too. But if we look at the bottom right corner there, we've got a 462. Ah, well, this company is saying roses require a very low amount of potassium, which is the exact opposite of the one on the other corner. And in fact, if you go through and look at these, they all have different formulations. Well, if they're all different, how can they all be perfect rose fertilizer? The answer is pretty clear. None of these are rose fertilizer. None of them are the best for roses. The same is true of tomato fertilizer. There is no such thing as tomato fertilizer. And in fact, if you take these products and look at the ingredient list, you'll find that the ingredient list and all of these are almost identical. And the reason is that they all contain very basic compounds and there's only so many chemicals they can put into these fertilizers. There is no such thing as plant-specific fertilizer. I had these two guests in to help me with the next part of this presentation. You might recognize them. They both want to grow roses, and they grow them separately because they're competitive with one another. They went out and got their soil tested. So the lady on the left found out that her soil is low in nitrogen. The gentleman, his soil tested as well, and he found out that he's got lots of nitrogen, but he needs potassium. Would these two people buy the same fertilizer to grow roses? They clearly wouldn't. The one person needs to buy nitrogen, and the other person needs to buy potassium. And this illustrates one of the biggest misconceptions about fertilizing garden. We do not fertilize the plants. What we do is we replace the nutrients that are missing in the soil. You have to analyze the soil, find out what's missing, and then add those missing nutrients. If your soil is not missing any nutrients, you don't have to fertilize. If you're missing one or two nutrients, those are the ones you need to add. There is no point in putting fertilizer on soil that already has all those nutrients. A lot of people will say, well, go out and get your soil tested. The problem is, what do you do with those results? If you now go out and just buy the nutrients that are needed, then that soil test makes sense. But what I find most gardeners do is they get their soil tested, they look at the report. It's too complicated to find just those nutrients that are needed because they're really not readily available. And so they go out and they buy a bag of 10, 10, 10 and spread it around. If you're going to do that, then don't bother getting a soil test. The other approach is to assume that the soil has everything it needs. And for most gardens, that's actually true. Most of our soil has the nutrients we need. The one nutrient that might be short is nitrogen. It behaves differently in soil and it runs away very quickly. So every time it rains, that water actually washes nitrogen through the soil profile and it washes it away. So our soils tend to be low in nitrogen. So if you're going to add anything, add some nitrogen. The other approach is you add compost. 
and compost has low amounts of all the nutrients. And so if you add the compost on an annual basis, you're constantly adding small amounts of nutrients. And even though they may take years to decompose and to become available to plants, you're slowly feeding that soil. And that's actually the approach I take in my garden. I just keep adding organic matter in there. And that organic matter is slowly adding small amounts of nutrients. And unless I see a deficiency in the plants, I don't really worry too much about fertilizing. Now, if you do fertilize, the ratio that plants use is about three to one to two. They need more nitrogen, a little less potassium, and very little phosphates, which is the middle number. It turns out that most of our soil has lots of phosphorus in it. And in fact, if you go back 20 years and look at lawn fertilizer, everyone had lawn fertilizer with a pretty high middle number because people thought, oh, that grass needs lots of phosphorus. And there's myths floating around that say, if you want things to bloom, you need to have phosphorus. Well, that's a complete myth. Over time, we found out our soils have lots of phosphorus in it. Plants just have a bit of a hard time getting to it. But there's lots there. Now in the U.S., many states have outlawed phosphorus in fertilizer because it's a waste of nutrients. It pollutes the lakes and rivers, and it just isn't needed. And I've noticed that in Ontario, the manufacturers themselves have done that. And so now you can find bags with a zero in the middle number because we don't need more phosphorus in our soil. We do need that nitrogen, and a little extra potassium helps. But if you're going to go out and buy a fertilizer for a plant, and this includes everything in your garden, whether it's vegetables or perennials or annuals, and all of your house plants, most of those plants want a ratio of 3-1-2. Keep in mind that that is a ratio. So you could buy a 3-1-2 or a 6-2-4 or a 9-3-6. Those are all exactly the same fertilizer. I always find it kind of funny when people go into the store and look for fertilizer and they see a a 555 and then they see another one it's a 10 10 10 and they ask well what's the difference which one should I buy well the ratios are exactly the same so it's just a matter of how much you put in the garden but in general I buy the one with the largest numbers because for whatever reason they're always the cheapest one so high numbers will give you a much less expensive fertilizer but ideally it has that ratio of 3 1 2 there's also something called micronutrients. These are the things like copper, sodium, molybdenum, and a bunch of other straight things. Iron is another common one. Plants need all of those micronutrients. If any one is missing, plants can't grow. Now, the good news is that most soil has all of those micronutrients. In general, you can ignore them. And if I'm fertilizing plants in the garden, something that's growing in real soil, I don't bother with the micronutrients. And by the way, when I use the word soil, I'm not including soilless mixes. So if you're fertilizing in containers, you have a different situation. In containers, you typically use material in there like peat moss that provides no nutrients. So we have to add all of the fertilizer that those plants need. So we're going to continually fertilize with a 312. That peat moss also has no micronutrients, so it's also important to add the micronutrients. You want to find a fertilizer that has everything in it. If you're working in raised beds, the fertilizer you use depends very much on what kind of material you have in those beds. If you've used real soil, you can treat them more like the soil in your garden. If it's mostly soilless mix, then treat them like a container. If you fertilize, again, use that ratio of 3, 1, 2. Then add a bit of compost or manure. And that compost and manure are slowly decomposing and slowly adding nutrients. And you add a little bit of that every year. And after a couple years, you don't have to add any synthetic fertilizer. That compost in the soil is now built up to a point where it will continue feeding your plants. If you're in the ground, that ratio doesn't change because that's the ratio that plants use. But for most soil, all you need is some nitrogen. To see the next video in this series, click in the top right hand corner. That will take you to a playlist that contains all the videos in this series.